The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. On Tuesday, the 22nd of October, we're going to have Tom Hugard as my guest. He was the point man at City Index uh, on CNBC in Europe for quite a while. I've known him for about 15 years. He has gone into the realm of the super trader, and he's going to tell us how he made that transition. Uh, you know pretty much how he met him and stuff, but he'll have some great ideas, I think, and uh, uh, you know, he just, he's just a really nice guy. He's uh, been doing this for a long time. He just turned 50, and he is extremely successful. So we'll, uh, we'll have him on. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have Dr. David Paul, who was the other part of the three-part series that we did over in London. He's the mathematician and psychologist, the Ph.D., that will be talking to us about uh, game theory and stuff that I think will be very, very good. All right, let's take a look at the first market we want to look at. Today here is the German DAX. We had a nice little Gartley forming here in the DAX this morning. We'll get this up here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Z has just talked about natural gas, folks. There's a lot of support there, 225. So pay attention. It gets much below it. It's no good. But 225 is the land in the sand for the natural gas. Pay attention to that one. I think that'll be one. That be, I might even have a chart on that one. Let's just take a quick look here. I think someone from... Uh, uh, from Europe sent me one of those this morning, and I, I don't seem to have found it here, but we'll have to uh, have to wait and see. Let's take a look here at the FTSE this morning. They're still fighting over there in uh, the U.K. about what's going to happen with Brexit. And you'll see here that it's got a nice little Gartley, still in an uptrend. We're right at the 50% level, and we'll, we're going to find out whether that's going to hold uh, or not. That's uh, really what we're paying attention to. Uh, any questions today is 877-927-6648. I would be happy to uh, answer them uh, uh, for you. But I wanted to uh, share with you uh, one of the charts that uh, – uh, Ed Carlson sent to us over the weekend. This is a chart that shows the uh, sh short interest in the market. You'll notice that it's at a record level now. In other words, there are very few shorts in the market. If you look at this closely, you can also see a three drive pattern that is forming in here. Now, this in the past, as you can see by those red arrows, has led to some weakness in the market. But, you know, we live in a time where the slightest tweeter feed will send the market up into the stratosphere. So that's it's neither here nor there. We'll have to pay uh, close attention to that as we as we look at this uh, throughout the day. Um, the the most interesting chart that I thought that uh, was in the uh, uh, newsletter this week. Uh, I'll bring that to your attention to uh, let you take a look at it. Is the uh, the uh, chart of the Nasdaq. Uh, uh, where do you get that? Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Z, I get that from Ed Carlson from uh, Seattle Market Technicians. That's where I get it. I, there's other places to get it, but he sends it to me, and that's I, I don't know where else to get it because I don't do the stocks. You know, I, I just do the stock indices, and all I can tell you is in the stock indices, the uh, – Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the open interest dropped in the S&P as prices went up. That's very bearish. And as prices went down uh, on Monday or on, on Friday, open interest went up, which is also bearish. So that's what it's showing. But, you know, the market wants to go up because of tweets or whatever. It keeps going up. You got, you, you know, if we get above uh, 3018, it's got, you know, it could be clear sailing for a long, long way. Let's take a look here at a really interesting chart, though, folks. This is the NASDAQ composite over the past year. As you can see here, uh, as of Friday, we had a head and shoulders pattern there. We had a, It was actually pretty almost perfectly symmetrical. With the, what's interesting is, is if you look at the left shoulder there at 8250, 
um, or 8200 That's the same price as we were on Friday on the right shoulder, 8200 We also have a 135 pattern in there also. Now, if we go charging above the highs that we made on Friday, this would be a failed pattern. So, uh, you know, these patterns fail, so you can't stand in front of it. I wish I had, you know, uh, Mr. Z, there's a lot of smart guys in this den that might be able to help you with that short interest data, but I get it from Ed Carlson, uh, Seattle Market Technicians. And I also, he sent another one that was really interesting because this is a, look, at, look what's happened here, folks, with the uh, advanced decline line. And this is mainly because of these stocks with the, uh, I, will I will tell him, thank you. You'll notice here, this is the uh, uh, Dow Jones over the past uh, year and a half, you notice when we had that uh, three drive to a top pattern with the uh, the advanced decline line was declining back in September. But look, look what happened this time. We've had the new highs in the advanced decline line. Of all the various things we look at, open interest and patterns, whatever you want to look at, no matter what you look at, it's uh, it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's bearish with the exception of that advanced decline line. So that's it. Now, remember the Dow Jones is up just a little bit, but remember that it's getting whacked by Boeing. Boeing's probably got 100 points in the Dow. So the Dow, if it weren't for Boeing, Dow would probably be up 150. So, you know, these markets are, you know, they're they're waiting for something more, I guess. That's the only thing I can, uh, the only thing I can understand that could be happening. So do one thing at a time. That's what you have to do. Um, the uh, other one that looks really interesting, folks, here is the uh, the crude oil market because it it really needs to hold this uh, 52.50 a barrel. Whether it's going to do it or not, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, you know how that'll end up. Now, here's another one that someone sent us that looks pretty interesting. This was the uh, uh, fact is we're we're already going to be going above that this morning. This will be a busted pattern. It's only 30 minutes, but and it's also coming from the UK. Uh, it is the uh, head and shoulders pattern but the right shoulder now you see will be up to equal the left shoulder with this morning's opening so that will still be a valid head and shoulder as long as we do not take out the the head which would be the high that we made on friday and the head and shoulders if you remember was one of the most popular patterns in dr andrew lowe's book uh the uh, non-random walk down wall street so those those are ones that were paying really close attention to this morning because of uh, we're getting a lot of news coming from everywhere. We had a uh, upper, a little bit higher high in the British pound last night and also in the euro. Uh, we want to talk about those because we're at really, really critical levels here in the U.S. dollar index uh, down here at this uh, uh, 90 uh, some 90 something we'd right at the 61 percent retracement we're just a tad below it as we were this morning we'll be able to take a look at this we'll be able to uh, put this up here and you'll be able to see that it's uh, right on the money there uh, for that so let's uh, sort of keep an eye on that that's the main thing that we want to be uh, the main thing that we want to be watching here this morning as we look at these charts. Uh, one of the things that we'll cover uh, after the break, of course, I want to cover the crude oil because it's such a, uh, it's at such a critical level. And also another one that's at a real critical level are those uh, those Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. They are, they are extremely critical here. We want to be able to watch that. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, uh, back, folks, and I was going to talk here uh, a little bit about the euro. Uh, I posted the chart of the dollar index. As you can see, we're down at this 61% level very, very closely. But if we look at the euro on a uh, closer basis here, you're going to see, uh, get this up here for one second, and uh, you'll get this, uh, you'll be able to see it. Uh, all righty, let's put this in. Uh, we'll be able to see here that uh, we're almost at the 61% retracement of the high that we made way back in June. Uh, we almost hit it last night. We got up to 11, 111.90. We're backed off about 30 pips from that level, not very much, but that's important to look at because there is a small ABCD there, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, wait. I don't understand. It's not really a trade. <laughs> He's the most successful psychoanalyst. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on here to uh, I'm trying to read things in the den and uh, do these things at the same time, and it's a little difficult uh, to take a look at. One of the uh, uh, other markets that is very, very interesting, folks, today here, we hit this one spot on. Those of you that live in Canada, pay close attention here because this is a long term chart. We've made a beautiful ABCD pattern from the Gartley uh, low back, or, uh, as a Gartley low right now at this uh, 131. We just uh, went a little bit below it and have held it rel relatively closely so far. So keep a close eye on that. It's very oversold market. It's been down for three weeks. We're sitting right at the 78% level in a 1.27 expansion. So that's in fact many of these uh, currencies are all in the same in the same thing. If you look at the Australian dollar, uh, we're doing pretty much the same thing in the Australian dollar. And uh, we'll get this up here to let you folks take a look at it. And then you, you'll, I'll let you do the others yourself because, you know, you've got to defy human nature. But this uh, Australian dollars has been in a bear market for a long time. Uh, we had that triple bottom down there at uh, 66 and change. We've rallied three handles, uh, which is a pretty good rally. So we're up in this area where it's going to have a little bit of resistance to see whether it's going 
going to uh, keep uh, keep making this uh, move to the downside. Now let's move on to the gold market here for just a second. <clears throat> Hold on here. I want to. Uh, Get this gold market up here, and uh, we'll be able to see that uh, we're we're looking at gold here. We've got the, the two scenarios. One is we're going to pop up to 1533, or we're going to get to 1512 and then start down again, folks. I, I frankly think that I'm I'm looking at the uh, the secondary one down to 15, 1456, uh, if that's what I'm looking at. But any move above 1512 would tell us that the gold would be uh, pretty strong. We haven't seen much. Uh, uh, strength in silver, nor have we seen much in platinum. Both of those have been uh, relatively, uh, especially platinum. If you notice here uh, on the platinum chart, uh, it's had a very, very meager move off of that uh, move up to that level uh, uh, up to getting above 920. It just can't seem to get any momentum to the upside. So watch that one. Now I want to get back to one that's uh, in the news uh, all the time, and that's the crude oil. And the reason why I think it's relatively important to pay attention to it is because the uh, crude oil is in the situation where they're getting ready to bring out this uh, uh, Aramco deal and, uh, you know, the stock for Saudi Arabia. And the problem that we have here is if you look at this crude oil chart is we had a really nice triple bottom down here from May to August and October. But the problem is we've had no action. We've only been able, we've only been able to rally $4 a barrel and we're now trading below 53, which is not a very good sign. That was one of the key things that I wanted to watch today is if we got below 53, which in fact we did. So that's, uh, that's the main thing to, uh, to try to keep an eye on. So we'll watch that uh, very, very closely. We'll see how that's going to work out. But right now it looks kind of bearish. The fact that it has no rally in it makes you wonder, you know, what's going on. And if we watch some of the others, you would be able to see the heating oil was doing, you know, pretty much the same thing. It had a tiny bit more strength than we had with the heating oil, than with the crude oil, but it was still you know, uh, still relatively negative. So those are just a few of the ones that we're keeping an eye on here this morning. Okay, uh, no questions coming in, so we're just going to have to wing it as we go, try to talk about a couple other things that uh, seem to be interesting. Let's take a look at one of the futures that we've been watching. Uh, this is the, uh, the cattle. Now, I don't know if you folks uh, did the cattle, but it had uh, well over $700 in it. If you sold it on Friday, it dropped uh, three handles, uh, excuse me, two and a half handles. It's back to uh, these levels. It's not, I haven't checked it this morning, so I shouldn't say that. But you can see here the beautiful pattern in the cattle where it made the ABCD pattern there at 99 and then went up. You can see we went up for five weeks, basically without any correction at all. There was one tiny little two-day correction in there, but it was just basically very, very oversold. Uh, natural gas. Oh, the natural gas, folks, once it once, hey, 225 was a number that uh, uh, that it should have stopped at. If it went below 225, it was no good. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why you, you know, it went four dollars below it. You don't want to sit with a 400 dollar risk. Now, I think it's it's got a chance to hold because 222, you know, was that secondary low that we had once before. Let's just get this up here and take a look. It's not looking good. That's right. Once it went below 225, that's why you can't stand in front of these things. Here, here you can just see. Let's get it up here. Uh, this is the uh, get the natural gas contract. We closed at uh, well, we're down. You can see we went. See, see, look at this closely, folks. You see the 225 right there uh, on the chart on the far right there. That's the 61% retracement coming off of that 382 level up there at 239. We we alerted you to the fact that we're probably going to have a pretty good correction from there, and we have, but a lot more than I expected. So 225 was the buy, and we went all the way down to 222, which is the 78% level now. If you if you really believe in natural gas, you've got to give it that little extra distance. You know, we went from 225 to 221. That's 400. So, if you put your stop below the 786, you got to risk another $200. Well, that's going to be a $600. So you have to decide whether you want to take that extra risk or not. First of all, it's coming down very very strong. You're down uh, what? You're down uh, 14 today. That 1,400 bucks. So that's a heck of a move. So I would expect you know the market to uh, you know, 
uh, hold here. But if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, you know, you could be looking at new lows down there at 204. So anything below two, two, uh, say I'd say 220 is uh, not a good sign because the, the old 786 is at 219, and my guess is that if it doesn't hold that, you know, it's going to look uh, look rather bad. I mean, we thought this, this correction was coming, but it's a lot more than we thought. So, And with crude oil weakening up like this, maybe there's some weakness in some of these things that, uh, you know, make you really, uh, really, uh, you know, skeptical about some of these things. So let's uh, pay close attention to it. It's not an easy gig, but watch it. You know, folks, a market that uh, we talked about many times here over the past, Last um, months, weeks, days, years has always been that uh, Treasury notes and Treasury bond market. And uh, folks, these Treasury bonds are just not wanting to rally today. And this is not a good sign. Something's wrong in River City. We're going to take a look at notes when we get back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, before we get to the uh, Treasury notes that I posted in here, I wanted to mention, you know, the uh, crude oil, excuse me, the natural gas has rallied back up to that 225 level, which was the original spot that we wanted to, you know, take a look at it. Now, if it goes below that 222, that would break the 78% level. So if you're in that, put your stop at 220, and uh, you don't have to risk, uh, you know, more than five bucks. Uh, uh, that's the way I would uh, do it right now because there's nothing else uh, that you can uh, really take a look at. So anyway, that's that's what we're seeing here. Watch the notes and bonds, folks. You can see here from the Treasury uh, note thing that we've had this big sell-off in the doggone thing, and we're having a uh, – uh, it's, it's a little weaker yet this morning, but let's take a quick look at it uh, from a shorter-term standpoint so we can get an idea of what's really happening here. Natural gas, I'm looking at the uh, November – uh, Mr. Bill, December is uh, a lot more expensive, but I'm looking at the November's, the one I'm watching. It's got plenty of time to trade another couple of weeks, and you know we're not in it for a lifetime or anything. Let's take a quick look here. You notice here on your 10-year Treasury notes, um, we we've taken out that 78% level again this morning by a little bit. We haven't taken out the new low from the 17th. We've done that in the bonds by just a little bit, but we haven't really uh, broken through by much. It took it out by a tick or two and then it's rallied. So th this market is now down for five weeks, folks. Remember, this is the one where we had zero interest rates and everything was scopacetic. And you can see when open interest was dropping, what was happening? Well, this is what's been going on in the S&P 500. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we had drops in open interest as the market rallied. On Friday, we had an increase in open interest, but the market was down. That means that's bearish. So if the market goes down with open interest increases, that means new shorts are coming into the market. And with that record lack of short interest that we're seeing from Ed Carlson from Seattle Market Technicians, that tells us that there's not many two people, not many people out there that are short, and uh, as they should be, as they shouldn't be, because you see, we've been, the market's been rallying, with the exception, of course, of the uh, Russell. Uh, the Russell looks just absolutely horrible, folks. It just is a very, very, uh, let's get that IWM. You can can see this one really has a, a very, very uh, uh, weak structure to it. We'll just get this up here. You know, you'll be able to see it. That's what we're watching there. So that's uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's sort of pay, uh, you know, close attention to that one as we go through this to, today. I think I covered the euro, uh, the euro, the pound. All of these are in real critical levels. And, of course, with the everybody's waiting for Boris Johnson to say something or, or uh, Claude Juncker from the, from the EU to say something. And just like the tweets here, the tweets there, the tweets and tweets are everywhere. So you have to pay attention to what the tweets are because uh, the tweets here and a tweet there and all the markets could be laid bare. Holy moly, I'm a poet and don't know it. I make it rhyme every time. Any questions, folks, 877-927-6648. We'll be happy to answer them if we could. Now, there is a uh, one of the commodities is on our watch list this week to uh, to pay uh, close. Oh, here's one I wanted to show you, folks, is the uh, let me get the chart up here for Apple, because we are uh, this is one of the this is the only. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, you know, you're right, Terry. The vote is tomorrow on Brexit, but between that vote and this 36 hours, anything could happen. You'll notice here, this is the uh, the long-term chart here on uh, Apple. It's making a, an incredible ABCD pattern, as you can see from the January low. We went from uh, 230 down to 144, and then 144 up to almost 244, almost 100 bucks. Uh, the uh, 1.618 expansion on that is 244. I believe we're right at 238 or 239 this morning. I'm not quite sure, but you'll notice uh, another ABCD pattern in there uh, between May and August, and uh, that takes us up there. Then you have a third one, which is the three drive pattern that also takes you up to that 240 level. So I wouldn't be buying Apple up here at 240. This has got three major patterns at a major uh, major area. All of the other all of the other stocks that we uh, oh we got a caller from uh, Florida. Bill, are you on the line? What can I do for you, my friend? Good morning, Larry. Uh, very interesting. The markets obviously seem to be sending mixed signals. The the gold contract and the the continuous contract, the last thirty minute bar 
at pretty significant volume, and yet if you look at the candlestick, it has a huge wick, and mm -hmm. now it's pulling back. But the bonds are pulling back, which means interest rates are going higher, which is maybe a good thing. I don't know, but uh, typically, don't doesn't gold go in the opposite direction of interest rates, and so. <sighs> Uh, gold, gold pulling back <laughs> makes sense this morning if the, if the bond is down, the 30-year bond is down. But I just want your thoughts uh, on that. And by the way, I'm, I'll be listening tomorrow, and I, I can't wait to hear uh, Tom, Tom yeah, tomorrow that, on your show. That will be fun. He's a, he's a great speaker. He's tremendously personable, a really fine young man. And uh, one of my pleasures of uh, being in this business was meeting somebody like him and being such a good friend of his over the years. But we'll look at that. Bill, to answer your question, I have to look at the bonds and the stocks separately. I have, I've done overlays on these things to show whether the uh, – there's any correlation, and frankly, I can't find one. You know, I've I've looked at them back and forth and up and down, and I'm still not able to find one that uh, that. Sometimes they they go together, sometimes they separate. You just don't know. Right, right. now, they're separating. Stocks been going up, bonds been going down. You know that. Could, and by the time we're done with this phone call, that could change. So I have to look at each yes. one separately yeah. and trade that pattern. That's really what I'm uh, what I'm trying to look at as I as I look at these. No, that's good, Larry. And boy, if you look at gold at a thirty-minute, a thirty-minute candle, it's really selling off now. As it, as it mm -hmm. went up on really good volume, and now appears to be, it's pulling back. I don't know what the volume is. I don't trust the volume that much because, uh, well, that's okay. just my, you know, I, I look at the, at the end of the day, I'll sometimes look at record volume, but, uh, you know, the gold trades quite a bit, and you know, there's a lot of players in that. That's six times the number of people in the, in the gold as they're in silver. So, but, uh, you know, platinum has been acting poorly and silver has been acting poorly. To me, gold has to get above 1512 in order to restate its bullishness. That's the way it looks like to me. But um, to me, that's, so that's what I'd be watching. Larry, you'd want to see it close above 15.12 or just no, get it, above 15? It, it's got to get above 15.12. If it, you know, okay. I don't care if it does. If it gets above 15.12, that tells me there's enough people there to push it above that 7.86, and that's what I like to see because it follows those numbers extremely well, and uh, that's the that's the real key to uh, you know what we're watching here. So I hope that's the right way are to look you, at it anyway. Are you seeing any patterns in gold right now? No, nope, not. I, I think no. I just posted it, and if we get about 15.12, there's nothing here between. Well, 15.02, there's a slight resistance, of course, but 15.12 uh, is the really big one. I mean, we get above that, and that's going to be important because that would break a 1.35 pattern, and that would tell you that you want to go higher. But you know, we're we're quite a ways. We're 20 bucks away from that, so yeah. uh, yes. we might. At least we are now. Okay. Maybe in 20 minutes we won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Thank you, Larry. Hey, Bill, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Uh, regarding Bill's question, folks, uh, oh, I'll talk a little bit more about interrelationships of markets here when we get back. It's from John Murphy's book, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, regarding Bill from Florida's question about bonds and stocks, you know, those interrelationships of markets are really tough because there's there's hardly any of them that are 100 percent. In fact, I don't know of any of them. That, well, there's probably one that I'm not aware of, but that's uh, that's neither here nor there. But uh, I, I look at each chart separately, and that's that's how I quantify what I think the risk should be, and that's really what I'm uh, what I'm trying to do is to try to line it up that way to see if it's uh, it's going to line up. But uh, I, I, I know the bonds have been going down and stocks have been going up. That's been happening since uh, September the 3rd. Now, that could change at any time. But uh, right now, that relationship is not working. But other times it has. Now, the bonds did make a lower low than we did on Friday at 159.10. We got down to 159.09. And so it made a little bit lower low. The Treasury notes have not quite made that low as of yet. But it's still a little interesting to see if it's going to uh, to do that uh, or not. That's the main thing. Uh, regarding that U.S. dollar, folks, uh, those were key numbers that we were looking at this morning. Uh, that, that number in the U.S. dollar index at uh, 92.80 or whatever it is, I believe, or 98.20, and I believe uh, no, 96.20, let's say, let's get it correct. And the other one, of course, is the euro up at that uh, one. The 111 uh, 90 level. So that's another one that's uh, quite interesting. So sort of pay attention uh, to that. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on and talk just a, a tiny bit about one other thing that I think is important, and that is uh, this is a stock that's uh, it's one of the uh, uh, in in. Let's get this thing going here with Facebook. You'll notice here it's under the gun a little bit, folks. Now, this stock is still that you, you can see the head and shoulders pattern. We made the right shoulder on Friday. You can see the left shoulder there at the 78% level. The head came in at the 1.27. Your right shoulder came in right there. You could have taken either shoulder, the one from the September uh, the 30th or the one from Friday. E either way, it is a head and shoulders pattern. So that's an interesting one. But the one that looks Looks, uh, that looks really bad from, from a technical standpoint, folks, is if we take a look here at Netflix, you'll be able to see Netflix went up to a 382 retracement with all that news on bullishness of his earnings and stuff at 308, yet it closed $10 lower, folks, after hitting that 382 retracement. That is really bearish. Uh, notice here, uh, 
uh, you know, you can almost uh, teach a course here on Netflix, but if you go far to the left over there back in December where we had the three drive to a bottom pattern, now you notice that little red box that's there? That day, the Dow Jones was down over 600 points that day, and yet Netflix was up. Let me tell you, folks, in order to get a stock up on a day when you're down 600 Dow points, it takes a lot of confidence, and it's going to go higher. So whenever you see really, really bad news and you see a market that is going higher, pay attention. In in October the 20th and 19th and 20th of uh, of 1987, especially on the 19th, I think there were 13 stocks that were up on the day that the Dow was down the worst it had ever been, down 16.5% in one day. And yet there were 13 of those stocks. If you would have followed those 13 stocks, you would have learned a really important lesson that we just talked about right here, is to buy the strongest, sell the weakest. But um, pay attention to that, because we got really super bad news. We're seeing that pretty much right now in in the Brexit. I mean, we're, we're, we're hearing a lot of things going on in the Brexit that doesn't make a lot of sense as far as, uh, you know, it should be hammering the British pound, but in fact, it is not doing that. If we switch gears here just a little bit and get over to the British pound, we'll take a look at this here on the longer term uh, basis here because we really want to be ready for this because we were fortunate enough to be short on the 27th of uh, of uh, June 19, two, 2017, two and a half years ago, when Brexit came in at 150. You know, the market broke down to 120 and then rallied to 144. Can you believe that? And then it came back down. But look where it sets now at 134.50. We're trading at uh, roughly 130 right now, 129 and change. If we get to that 134.50, that's going to be a 61% retracement of that move. And then when we look at this on a little bit longer time frame, you have to use your little imagination here. But if you, uh, I can't change this chart because it's static because I can show it here in the room a lot easier. But you, use your imagination to go back to 2017 when it was trading at 150. Then in 2018, it's trading at 144. And if this happens right here at 135, 134.50, 135, that's going to be a 135 pattern on the weekly chart. And it's going to be a 61% retracement of the high for 2018. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, uh, our good fr one of our good friends over in the UK was uh, smart enough to put on some uh, 134 calls uh, when they were almost nothing. And uh, yes, uh, Ruby, Ruby asked me if I thought the, the hogs were going to weaken up a bit. Yes, I do, Ruby. Let me show you why I was thinking of you when I was doing this chart uh, over the weekend, because it certainly looked like I don't know where they are today. But with that big move down that we had Friday, let's get this up here. You'll be able to see that uh, we should pull down. You know, we could make a move all the way back down to one to 62, Ruby. Uh, we might watch the 61 percent retracement. That's around 66 and a half. But below that, you want to watch the 162. And the reason why is if you get down there, uh, you, you'll have a ABCD structure from the uh, 30th of October down into the, uh, excuse me, 30th of September down into October the 7th and up and then down. That would that would come in most probably at the end of the week here on Friday. That's the one I would be, you know, sort of watching. We, we do have a, uh, a new moon here uh, way back here in, uh, that'll be coming on the 27th. And I think we'll have, we have Norm Winsky coming on on Thursday. He'll be our guest Thursday. Tuesday is Tom Hugard. Wednesday is Dr. David Paul. Thursday will be uh, Norm Winsky. And Friday will be Tim, the wizard boss out of uh, Sarasota, Florida. So it will be uh, interesting to see uh, what's happening with that one. But I do think the hogs are weakening. Uh, are they down a little bit today? Uh, because if they are, I, I'm, I'm bearish cattle. I think the cattle can back off five, six cents from here without any trouble. But after uh, six weeks up at cattle, the demand is starting to come back in a little bit. So we'll see if, in fact, it'll hold that level. So those are just a few of the things that we're watching as we go through here uh, from that level here right there. By the way, uh, Tom Tom's name is Hugard, H-O-G-A-R-R-D. 
And uh, thank you, Marshall. We do have some good guests. You know, it's one of the advantages of living to an old age. You get to be a lot of friends. Unfortunately, they, some of them, you know, just pass on, and that makes it. Uh, yes, the December should be weaker than the February because February they built those in already. So December hogs should be. Are they below 66, Ruby? Because if they are, that means they're probably going to go down to 61. Would be my, uh, would be my guess if uh, we pay attention to that one. So we'll see. Neither here nor there. Okay, let's move on here to the next one that we want to talk about. And that, oh, we got a break coming up here. Oh, the, the, the December 6835, well, they, they're up a little bit then. They're holding it. They're holding okay. Yeah, well, that's, I, I don't, I thought they would be down. I thought they would get down a little bit lower down to about 66. 877 927 6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, okay, folks, uh, I wanted to bring uh, another uh, chart to your attention that's very interesting, sent to us by one of our friends across the pond. This happens to be the uh, Russell 
I'll get this up here. This is the Russell 2000. It's on a four-hour chart. And as you can see here, uh, its colors are a little uh, spectacular, chartreuse or yellow, I guess. You notice that the 62%, 61.8% level came in. It hit it two days in a row, and then it has sold off a little bit. And uh, as long as we don't close above that level, I think it's got a chance of uh, you know, moving uh, a great deal uh, lower. But we'll see if that's going to be the case. There's a whole bunch of numbers that tell us that's a beautiful Gartley. Remember, with the uh, NASDAQ making a new high, the Russell was lagging badly, and that's why that advanced decline line uh, moves up so much is because those stocks are, that are going up are going up faster than the ones that are going down. Okay, let's move out to the next thing we want to do is to remind you to be here tomorrow because Tom Hugard will be our guest. We'll probably have him on a little bit early in the morning, so we might have a little bit more time to, to chat. Well, no, we have a whole half hour, so that'll be okay. Wednesday will be Dr. David Paul uh, from the from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. He was one of the third party. Tom, I, and David did the uh, web webinar over uh, the, the seminar over in London, and then on Wednesday. Uh, uh, Thursday, we'll have uh, Norm Winsky, and then Friday, we'll have Tim Boss. We have two astrologers to wind out the week, both from Florida, one from Naples, one from Sarasota. So both of those will wind out the week on Wednesday, Thursday. So remember, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, uh, and may God bless and uh, keep all folks that have passed away uh, in your prayers, folks, because by golly, they're dropping like flies around here. We just got to be a little careful. So that's it, folks. We'll see you all tomorrow on the flip-flop, and may God bless.